Hey, this is Ryan Holiday. Welcome to another episode of Ask Daily Stoic. You send us your questions about Stoicism, about life, about the Stoic figures, about me, whatever you want. We answer your questions. We try to do three every Saturday. You can email us your questions at info at dailystoic.com. You can also hit us up at at Daily Stoic on pretty much every social channel. Don't send questions to me, though. I won't see them. First question is from Jesus or it's from Jesus himself, I'm not sure. But he says, who are some well-known figures from history who are influenced by Stoicism? There's obviously a ton, and we have an article on Daily Stoic, which you can check out. But I remember when I was first read Marcus Aurelius, I was in college, and then I had to read John Steinbeck's book, East of Eden, shortly thereafter. And it was like, whoa, Stoicism is in this book. The Chinese servant of the main family is like a fan of Marcus Aurelius, and he's quoting from the book. So I've kind of always been on the lookout for little ones. My favorite examples, Theodore Roosevelt took a copy of Epictetus with him on his famous River of Doubt journey, which you can actually see the copy of Meditations. It's at the Theodore Roosevelt house in New York City. Thomas Jefferson died with a copy of Seneca on his nightstand, which I always thought was cool. George Washington was introduced to... Stoic philosophy by a neighbor when he's about 16 years old. One of his favorite quotes is from the play Cato about the Stoic, which he put on at Valley Forge. But he says, I like to look at things in the calm and mild light of philosophy. So George Washington is a great example. General Mattis, our most recent Secretary of Defense here in America, four-star general in the Marines. He actually takes Marcus Aurelius with him on the campaign trail wherever he goes. James Stockdale, former vice presidential candidate, as he was parachuting in to Vietnam where he knew he was going to be taken prisoner. He said, I am leaving the world of technology and I am entering the world of Epictetus, which I always thought was cool. Arnold Schwarzenegger, I know, is interested in Stoicism and I know that because I've talked to him about it. The New England Patriots have read Stoicism. So the Seattle Seahawks, I've spoken to the Cleveland Browns and the Los Angeles Rams. Les Snead, who's the GM of the, the Rams, is a huge Stoicism fan. Nick Saban talks about Marcus Aurelius. There's actually an ESPN article about Saban and Marcus Aurelius helping uh, him prepare for games. Michelle Tafoya, Sunday Night Football, a big fan of Stoicism. And then a bunch of rappers have talked about Stoicism. Lupe Fiasco raps about Marcus Aurelius in one song, which I always thought was cool. Somebody sent me that T-Pain has a mixtape called Stoicville, so he's got to be vaguely familiar with it. J.K. Rowling talks about Marcus Aurelius fair amount on, on Twitter. Brie Larson has as well. Nassim Taleb, you know, sort of interesting Stoic fellow traveler. Neil Strauss, I know, Jonathan Newhouse, who's the head of Connie Nast, Tim Ferriss, Jack Dorsey. I could go on, read the article. The point is, Stoicism has always been a philosophy not only influential people have been interested in, but has influenced influential people and shaped the choices and decisions that they've made. And so, I, you know, that endorsement is worth what it's worth. I don't think Stoicism is more or less worth following because famous rich people or powerful people have used it. But I think we should look at the effect that it's had on them in their lives. And if we think that that's a positive effect, then it's something we should emulate. Hey, everyone. We've talked a bunch here before about the tie between philosophy and exercise, the importance of the the training aspect of stoicism. That's why I work out every day, either running or swimming or going to the gym. And so our sponsor this week is a great app called Future, which pairs you with a world-class trainer through the app that pairs workouts for your schedule, your life, the level of fitness that you're in. It even pairs with your Apple Watch. You've probably seen the Apple Watch I've posted on Instagram before with my workouts. If you don't have an Apple Watch, they'll even send you one for free. You can try Future today at tryfuture.com slash stoic for a two-week trial for just $1. It's great. My wife, Samantha, is actually using it right now. Doesn't matter your schedule. Doesn't matter what's going on. They'll pair a great workout for you. World-class trainers. Should be awesome. Check it out. Tryfuture.com slash stoic. Thanks to them for sponsoring Ask Daily Stoic. Okay, so Nathini said, how do you let go and change beliefs that aren't serving you anymore? I mean, I guess I would turn that around like why would you be holding on to beliefs that aren't serving you anymore I mean there's always sort of some vestiges of old habits and assumptions that are there even if we want to move on but I I do think like you should always be asking yourself do I still believe this is this true is it helping me and one of the things I most admire about Marcus Aurelius is how he talks about he's like when somebody shows you that you're wrong 
They're not hurting you. They're doing you a favor. They're helping you. I think this idea that we cling to things that we believe because we used to believe them or because someone once told us that, that's something we always want to be questioning. We always want to be forming our beliefs anew. We want to be evaluating them as if we were discovering them for the first time. Seneca, you know, I think we can take from his constant quoting and meditations on someone like Epicurus, who's theoretically a rival or, a, you know, holds radically different views, is him constantly questioning what he believes, comparing it against what other people believe, seeing if it holds true in experience, and then moving on or adapting or changing those ideas as he incorporates them into his life. I think the other thing I would think about is like when, when we ask ourselves why we believe a certain thing or why we're doing it a certain way it's usually because it's serving us some need even if it's not a positive it's doing something for us like i heard this great line once they said traditions are solutions to problems that we've forgotten about so the idea that like the way we've always done things or the habits we have or the beliefs that we've picked up at some point that was true or at some point that helped us get ahead it was adaptive that might not be true now but we, we're holding on to that so I, I would think about like this belief system that you're holding on to this idea this bad habit or whatever it is it's keeping you comfortable in some way it's keeping you in a relationship that you shouldn't be anymore or it's maintaining a connection that you're you know reluctant to let go of it's keeping you rooted in the past or it's you know keeping you preoccupied there's some thing that it's doing for you like like drinking you know you shouldn't be drinking but you can't stop drinking well why are you drinking probably because it makes you not have to feel something that you do feel when you're sober so if you want to change the drinking habit you have to address that feeling and then the need will lessen and i think that's something to think about as you evaluate and you question these belief systems and move on but really great question and I, and I hope people sort of work on that. All right, last question for today. OB asks, how do you not take things personally? He says, is there any stoic approach to looking at things or events objectively without being personal? The truth is like, almost nothing is personal. Like when, when you think about the things that you do to other people, how often are you intentionally inflicting distress or problems on them it's not it's it's you're always thinking about yourself you're not thinking about the other person so it's like we give ourselves a pass and then we won't give other people a pass we know when we mess up it's because we were tired or hungry or confused or overwhelmed but then when someone else messes up it's because they're an awful person we know oh sorry i didn't see that car that's why i drifted into their lane or i accidentally cut them off but of course they cut me off because they're an asshole it's realizing that most people are not socrates says like nobody does wrong on purpose obviously i think that's a simplification like there are such things as sociopaths and psychopaths and there are evil people in the world but for the most part people are doing what they think is right in fact they're they're trying to help more than they're trying to hurt realizing where people are coming from from, which is a place eerily similar to your own place. T to me, that helps. I think the other thing you could say is like, even if it is personal, what does it matter? You, you decide whether it's good or bad. We talked about this at Daily Stoic. Like, the ask is the ask. If someone says, hey, can you stay, you know, an extra hour after work? You decide, oh my God, why are they doing this? Like, you can just say, no, I'm sorry, I can't. You decide to interpret a, a remark as rude. You decide to take it personally. And so realizing that, like, you actually just have the power to tell yourself the story, whatever you want to tell it about the event, and that how often and regularly you do it. Like, when your parents say one thing, you read it this way. When your boss says it, you read it this way. When your husband or wife says it this way or when someone your your least favorite person in the world says it you decide all the time to decide the same actions in radically different ways and so why don't you just choose not to take this one personally that that would be one thing if i would leave you with a marcus realist quote I'd, this doesn't have to upset you he says you always have the ability to not have an opinion and i, I think when you realize that you have strength you can choose not to be offended as epictetus said Remember, you are complicit in the outrage. Like when someone says something and you decide to be mad, you are dancing with them. And so when you decide, even if the person was meaning it personally, it only is personal if you choose for it to be. So remembering you have that power is really important. Easy to say, of course, hard to do. Hey everyone, today's sponsor is Lisa, the online mattress company. One of the most important things you can do to ensure a productive day is to have a good night's sleep. I have a whole chapter 
and stillness is the key about why you have to sleep. Don't say, I'll sleep when I'm dead. You'll die if you don't sleep now. It doesn't matter how much philosophy you've read, how much study you've done. If you can't sleep comfortably, it's tough to perform well and think clearly. Lisa will ship a good night's sleep directly to your doorstep. Each of their mattresses is made to order and ship for free. You just open the box and the mattress inflates right there. And all the mattresses come with a 100-night trial and a 10-year warranty so you can feel confident in your investment. And their hybrid mattress has been rated the best overall by sites like Business Insider, Wirecutter, and Mattress Advisor. And they donate one mattress for every 10 mattress they sell. So when you buy one, you're helping someone in need get a good night's sleep. Just visit lisa.com today to shop their president's sale. Save up to $400 on a mattress today. Again, that's l-e-e-s-a.com. Shop today. And I mean it. Sleep is important. I thought I'd read today a quick excerpt from the February 15th entry of the Daily Stoic. The title is Only Bad Dreams, and the quote is from Marcus Aurelius's Meditations, Book 6, Passage 31. He says, Clear your mind and get a hold of yourself. And as when awakened from sleep and realizing it was only a bad dream upsetting you, wake up and see that's what there is just like those dreams. The author Raymond Chandler was describing most of us when he wrote in a letter to his publisher, I never looked back, although I had many uneasy periods looking forward. Thomas Jefferson once joked in a letter to John Adams, how much pain have cost us the evils which have never happened. And Seneca would put it best, there is nothing so certain in our fears that not yet more certain in the fact that most of what we dread comes to nothing. Many of the things that upset us, the Stoics believed, are the product of imagination, not reality. Like dreams, they are vivid and realistic at the time, but preposterous once we come out of it. In a dream, we never stop to think, does this make any sense? No, we go along with it. The same goes with our flights of anger or fear or other extreme emotions. Getting upset is like continuing the dream while you're awake. The thing that provoked you wasn't real, but your reaction was. And so from the fate comes real consequences which is why you need to wake up right now instead of creating a nightmare. I'm always amazed. Actually, the most popular quote we've ever put on the Daily Stoic Instagram is related to this. It's Seneca's quote, we suffer more in imagination than in reality. That's sort of the idea is that, sure, there are things that worry us. There are things that are concerning, but it's our paranoia, our fear, our stress that often makes these things worse in advance. And so we know this, but we forget it. And then the mind races, the dream becomes so vivid that it feels real. And uh, we cause problems for ourselves and the people around us. So that's just a thought to think about this Saturday. You can check out the Daily Stoic audiobook on Audible and pretty much everywhere books are sold. So thanks. It's another episode of Ask Daily Stoic. Keep sending your questions, info at dailystoic.com. Thanks to our sponsors. Thank you for listening. You can check this out as the podcast. You can check it out on our YouTube channel. Thanks. Send in your questions. Hey, thanks for watching Daily Stoic. If you want to learn more about Stoicism, you can check out some of our other videos here. Subscribe. We'd really appreciate it. Keep learning. Keep studying. And remember those four Stoic virtues, courage, justice, temperance, and wisdom.